Good afternoon from a rainy Delhi. We really have been looking at a lot of rains in the past few days, but that hasn't dampened our, um, our enthusiasm to meet you. And we again have brought uh, a veteran in the field, in specialized field of furnishings to you today. Uh, so let me just welcome you all. One and all, welcome today again on a Thursday at four o'clock. Uh, Discover Design brought to you by GS Institute of Design. Let me again remind you what Discover Design is. This is a series of webinars we have been conducting since uh, April, early April. And we bring to you a lot of information about um, discovering what design is all about. We of course began with a series in um, interior design and a lot of relevant aspects in context to the interior. And in future, we are going to move on to many other areas of design as well. But today we have a very interesting topic on furnishings and interiors, relevance, design, and trends with Ajay Arora. That's Ajay for you. And we have, uh, I need to really give a little background to what he's done because there's so much to talk about. And then I'm gonna um, invite him to talk to us about it. But before that, um, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Nain Xiao. I head the JS Institute of Design. Uh, the, uh, at the moment, we have a program in interior design. It's a one and a half year uh, certificate program where you are going to be doing six months of internship. As for today, your, the topic on furnishings, okay, uh, I'm going to also, I'll talk a lot more on Ajay Arora, but before that, uh, let me welcome you to put in your questions as you go through the session. Any questions you have, please put it in the question and answer uh, block, and we will take it up at the end of the session. We of course have a limited time, but we'll try to answer as many questions as possible, and any uh, any questions left over, we'll try to come send it to you perhaps after the session is done. So welcome Ajay. And today uh, there are a lot of participants wanting to hear what you have to say about furnishings, fabrics, the trends, and what, what are the new developments in it. But let me give you, a, let, let me give a little short, brief introduction to what, uh, to your background, of course, Many of the uh, viewers and participants perhaps know quite a lot about you already. Ajay Arora is the managing director at D Decor Home Fabrics Private Limited. He is an alumnus of the prestigious owner president management program at Harvard Business School and textile engineering from VJTI Mumbai. Ajay has been instrumental in changing the face of Indian home furnishings industry. And this has been through continuous innovations on business model, investing in technology, and establishing a market leading premium brand, D Decor. I think all of us have heard of D Decor, people who are involved in this industry, designers, uh, interior decorators, design, interior de designers, textile designers, many of us. Uh, D Decor has achieved the title of world's largest manufacturer of curtains and upholstery fabric. I think this is a real proud moment for all of us. We have been wanting, uh, we have been wanting to talk about a lot of success stories from India. This is definitely one of them. Uh, it has, it was started by Ajay Arora and Sanjay Arora in 99. Um, the furnishing fabrics business exports its products to over 65 countries uh, with USA, Europe, UK, and the Middle East being its biggest market. It's an exemplar of how two brothers built 1,500 crore turnover um, with over 20,000 SKUs and is endorsed by our very own celebrity Shah Rukh Khan and Gauri Khan. So Ajay, welcome. I'm very sure that your session today will also bring forth some of the, uh, you know, the nuances of the way you have gone about developing the furnishing industry which is right now claimed to be the biggest producers or exporters in the world. 
welcome once again and let let me just by start by asking you to fill in some of the introductory uh, you know int introduction about yourself because i was able to probably gather a bit from my known sources but i don't think i have the inside story so would love to hear a little bit about that so uh, thank you nen uh, for having me and it's a pleasure to you know be on this forum and hopefully learn something from the design community here and share some of my own experiences um my own background in in the textile business comes from the virtue of the fact that i'm blessed to have been born into a family that was in the textile business mm -hmm. and um you know the only good thing i've done in my life is i followed my father's advice to study textiles without really you know debating or analyzing it too much so my four years at uh, vgti uh, you know have been very very instrumental in shaping my knowledge and understanding of this industry um, it's an extremely good course i i benefited a lot from it and continue you know to be guided by that knowledge in my decisions even today and um, after you know completing the course i joined the family business which was into a parallel textiles i was uh, you know again very very lucky to get at that time a, pro a new project to set up within for the family business and it was uh, for making a parallel jacquard fabric and i went uh, you know uh, from a clean blackboard to try to set up that factory it was my first experience of setting up in uh, actual manufacturing unit within a, a larger factory that we already had it was a new building so as to speak so firstly i i just like to remove you know the idea that i have uh, you know got started from scratch i mean there was a lot of blessing on from the platform the reputation the knowledge that the family had yes uh, without you know taking too much time i'll say that as the first 5 years journey evolved there was a lot of success in the a uh, project that i started and then due to the fashion cycle uh, it totally crashed and uh, we were at a point where i was asked to shut down the unit and um, the only credit that i'll again give myself is i did not accept that decision and decided to find a alternate solution for my small little group of you know people who i called work family always and uh, we you know change the software towards home furnishing and uh, 1995 i was when this happened 5 uh, years after i started my career and uh, you know lots of good memories of the learning that i had by you know searching the domestic market my visits to jagdish store initially as well are very very much important chapters in my book where i learned what's going on in this space and um, you know having the benefit of uh, you know a, a good textile background i was able to connect a few dots and get started with uh, you know making curtains and then subsequently you know i kind of reflected that it is it was quite a rude shock to see the fashion business go from very good success to zero so the learning that i took was it was not prudent to stand on one leg hence i started to investigate what we could do in home furnishing and export and from there started the journey of uh, trying to build an export business a manufacturing system which right. which in india could uh, be as good as a european manufacturing cluster and spent the first 10 years trying to set up the manufacturing system again i was very um, very much partnered in the journey by my wife who comes from a design background so uh, my wife's uh, uh, mother is was one of the prominent interior designers mrs zareen khan and uh, although my wife had no formal training in textile but you know traveling with me and very uh, natural flair in 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 design complemented a lot i was also then you know joined by my brother who you know was also you know still in in the apparel side so but after about 3 or 4 years he also has been very instrumental in 
in in building the deck off so it's been a journey where i get too much credit and uh, there's a huge team of uh, people at ddecor who is behind everything that you mentioned so i'm not trying to be humble i'm just stating the facts that uh, i am i'm fortunate to to play the force uh, the face of ddecor at many platforms but uh, there are 6500 people at ddecor every day and i think that is what is uh, unique about this country that we have excellent talent and uh, you know the only good things we have done is we've directed that talent into this towards more design oriented differentiated products sold to better appreciating consumers and customers in india as well as abroad wow that's that's real music to our ears that is the designers ears to hear that from you ajay but before i proceed i i was supposed to announce something um i want to let you know that this podcast is hosted on hub hopper studio Hub Hopper Studio is India's leading podcast hosting and distribution platform. So, pl- folks, please go up and listen to our podcast and many more earlier ones as well. So, let's come back. Sorry, Ajay, I had to divert a bit because mm. I've been missing that. <laughs> okay. So, the as we uh, when you started and and whatever it is now, do you think the the roles and the elements, types of furnishing? variety of furnishing what is that what has been the difference is it been two decades now yeah so i i think uh, 1995 i started looking into the space just made a i would say a, a dip in the a dip of my toe into the furnishing pool in 95 but 99 is where when we incorporated a company after a family separation in where where we were partners with our cousins in the apparel business so 1999 to about 20 years has been the journey the biggest change in this 20 years has come in my uh, belief it has come due to the advent of cad systems and nobody nobody could guess that i would probably choose this but design becoming very very prolific very very possible to create a lot of design and transfer that design to manufacturing system very easily whether it is an idea or whether it is a process a processed piece of design uh you know which which goes and talks to a manufacturing system all of this has gone completely digitized in the era when i started and i think we caught on to that very very early that uh, you can kind of uh, uh you know exploit the potential of your machinery much better and marry it much better to the demands of your customer much better if you're able to do this uh i would say customized design designing not getting married to any one style being able to you know customize and localize for different uh you know international markets domestic market different segments and the cat systems have enabled us to be spoiled for choice and uh, that has been the biggest change that i've seen in in about 99 we used to wait uh, customers used to wait for new product today today designers have to guess how can they improve their strike rate you know of getting it more accurate so that has been in 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 brief the transition that's happened the biggest one of course there are many other changes that have happened but from a design standpoint i think that has been a biggest biggest force so would you also say that the interior space uh, the design of interior space and the utilities in within the space has that impacted Uh, the way fabrics or furnishing fabrics have been viewed yeah so uh, there's been a tremendous move towards you know more minimalistic and much more modern contemporary furniture uh, indians have got exposure to trap to mainly to europe and uh, europe being the mecca of furniture in this space and you know most of the interior design has em- that india kind of emulates is coming from europe and because the furniture has gone very clean cut and you know most of the italian furniture everybody in this forum would be familiar with it does not marry well with intensive design so the design has gone min- minimalistic and more plain if you speak to most of the people across the world and they check what is selling 60 65% of their sales are coming from planes now that is bad news for designs for for a designer uh that and it's bad bad news for a manufacturer as well because it kind of takes uh, away the ability to differentiate 
there is a lesser ability to differentiate when the fabric is plain. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the emphasis has has moved on towards how you combine. I think the the whole shift is now on how you combine and you know how you're able to uh, uh, make a space more interesting. So accessories or the, the cushions that you throw on a plain sofa or how you're able to, uh, I would say, have the right balance between, you know, a lot of crowd on a table, crowded space on a table with lots of things on a table and yet a, yet relief to the eye through large windows. The curtains have, have become far, far more, I, I would say in many homes, the curtains are getting replaced with blinds. Many places, people are putting sheer curtains just so that they can look outside and the light can come in and the spaces can be much more, you know, uh, I would say nicer feeling to be in. So nice. that that's, I would say the design shift that has happened. But having said that design goes in cycles and nobody should believe that any of this is going to stay forever. Mm -hmm. And every niche uh, exists. I mean, uh, the contemporary design and classic design or Indian design has its own audience and own appreciation. That continues, but uh, there's a very large following that is that is taking to contemporary design. Also, I, I must add that hotels have also jumped onto the same trend. And as, as the in our country and abroad, you know, there has become far more globalization. People travel much more today than ten years ago. Uh, the, the hotels have have become places where sometimes people actually learn or experience a different look than their own house. And many people then get inspired by that and want to emulate that. So hotels have also been transmitting. And then of course, magazines and trade shows, all of this is shifting design more towards, uh, uh, I would say, highest common factor between international markets in India. So India is become, is, has come very close to uh, the international trend, very, very close to that. Uh, we, we have been very successful with our Indian design collections in India as well as abroad. So the reverse is also seen. Uh, we've been, we've, we've been uh, I would say, early to see all this. At DDECO, we, we, for example, when we started to see in the Milan furniture show become very, very contemporary, we stopped buying mach mach jacquard machines and started a strong shift towards plain, plain and textured Dobby fabrics. We weren't, that was not really part of our manufacturing system, but we changed the system. We didn't think that we can, sh we would be able to go against the design trend. So, so, so the reason I'm, I'm giving such a big uh, uh, answer to this is a shift in design can really shift a company's fortunes. Okay. If you if you look at uh, uh, you know a very good a very parallel example, you look at a company like Mercedes Benz. Uh, at a certain point in time, about ten years ago, it was being considered as very static and, 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 and old school in its design. And BMW, its prime competitor, was being looking like cutting edge in design. And the consumers were, all the consumers were gravitating towards BMW and Mercedes was seeing a huge financial decline. And if you see, uh, you know, Mercedes reaction to that, you will appreciate the impact of design. I think this story that I'm telling has one of the biggest uh, evidences of what a big difference design can make to the fortune of a company. And today, Mercedes-Benz has young, cutting-edge design, very, very attractive uh, models, and that's what's brought the company back. And of course, technology of, of the product and the performance of the product is very important in certain cases, cars especially, in this example, but the visual appeal, the design is very, very important. So. I'm very uh, uh, much a fan of the impact of design. Okay. And, and, and I think that is, that is the only reason that uh, D-Decor has become a brand in India. Otherwise, okay. otherwise, there's very very little to tell anyone as to why is my product better than yours. All right. So, uh, well, so much more. Uh, there's so much of hope coming from you. But I would like to include our participants in the conversation we are having. And so, Tarika, can we have the poll question? In the meantime, um, Ajay, I, okay, there we see that. Uh, this is the question for our participants. And it's about themes and styling. So what you might have just heard from Ajay, 
would help you answer this and of course your own experience as well. So the three visuals given are for Art Deco, industrial style and minimalist style or all of the above. So which interior shown has theme styles? And I'm very sure we are going to get, wow. Well, it's, uh, I'm very sure today the participants are, um, are the ones who probably are dealing with this day in, day out. Uh, but would you have any comments to make about the kind of styles that we are talking about, the thematic, uh, uh, you know, topics uh, by designers, whether it is for an interior or whether uh, within furnishing coordinates themselves? Uh, what would you have to say about this? So, uh, you know, I, I would just say that design is very much a, a matter of personal taste, uh, but um, it's in in most homes in India where people do not really construct their home, they buy an apartment and then they do the interiors, mm -hmm. uh, they, they then create their home within uh, or a design statement within a building which already has a design statement. And uh, that's, that's a very um, uh, different, um, I would say, circumstance compared to being able to design your home from ground up. I'm hoping that uh, with the COVID experience, uh, people will start to be more ambitious about how they go about their, their, their design for their home. And uh, the right, uh, uh, I would say, result comes when you marry the architecture to the interior design in a, in a harmonious fashion, in a pre-planned manner. Yeah, so based on your experience, Ajay, do you think within the country we have pockets of uh, places where you think your furnishings are always bought in theme style um, and globally. So can you sort of help us understand, is this generally different or everywhere? Or there are countries which are very conscious of the fact that they move with trends, they move with themes, they are very particular about certain colors coming together. So the, 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 the cycle of the fashion industry is far more, I would say, intense than the home industry. It is becoming more intense in terms of frequency of change and in terms of following the trends like you're asking. The fashion industry creates the trends and somehow, since the customer is common for fashion and home, it, it kind of spills over and uh, people who are brands and trendsetters in design in the home space keep a good watch out for what's happening in the fashion space. To answer your question that uh, whether there are places where people are far more, I would say, quick to add, quicker to adapt the newer fashion, mm -hmm. uh, I would say the, um, the, the, the whole world is, is seeing that newer and nicer buildings are coming up in all the major cities. And uh, the new home uh, cycle is also shrinking. People are upgrading their homes. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you, once you've settled into a home, what you call as your permanent home, mm -hmm. then the only thing you can do to excite yourself is to quickly change the home furnishing. The, 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 the change of the whole interior design also is quite a big exercise in a country like India. So I'm, I'm, I'm tilting your question towards our own business of home textile and changing the curtain and upholstery and saying that is something that is the, the cycle of change is increasing. And when it's increasing, then people do follow, definitely follow what's the fashion out there. Some people stick to what is, what do they like, their own expression of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see uh, a lots and lots of people following one theme. We, I, 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 I D-Decor, uh, we have not been, uh, I would say, uh, seeing one collection out of all our collections go very, very successful. Yes. There is a, probably always a, you know, a group of collections that are more appreciated than others. So I hope I've answered the question. Right. And, and so with that, let's bring a poll question on color uh, 
to the audience. Tarika, please bring that up. And uh, let's see what the uh, participants have to say, because I think for us colors, I mean, we designers love working with colors and we have a lot of subjective choice of that. So let's see what the question says. Uh, which of the interiors align best the color schemes with the fabrics and furnishings? And these are the three interiors uh, visuals given to you. So if you, uh, let's see what the participants would like to say. Do you think tranquil hues or is it blues, Pantone blues? Is it the earthy tones? Where do you think the alignment works best? I do think that you know, the subjective choice is going to come forward, okay? And I noticed that our participants, you can see most of them really are looking at tranquil hues. And what do you have to say about the colors? Are you working with a lot of colors all the time? Is your uh, you know, yearly range so vast and so varied? It must be difficult to plan your design collections for the for the year or the year after. Yeah, so, that? so uh, firstly, we are also doing similar to what you're doing. We are always pursuing what's the fashion color this year. Every year there are trend forecasts. There are, like I said earlier, there are signals from the fa fashion industry as to what colors are trending more. Mm -hmm. we, we make sure that those colors are becoming feature colors in our presentations in our, in our samples, et cetera. But um, yes, we do spoil for choice. We will, if we did a plain fabric, we would not do it in less than 40 to 50 colors. We want that people are able to get the specific color that they want because we are a strong believer that color sells fabric. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's very, uh, it's something that people don't understand that, you know, if, if, you had two green fabrics or 10 green fabrics to choose, you'd buy the one which is the specific green that you want. And that there are 11 types of greens and, and 14 types of blues, but the consumer is getting quite specific about which one he likes. It, right. create, it creates a lot of complexity at the back end, And I think the secret of the textile business is how do you manage to evolve per relevant fashion and yet deal with this complexity in, in your factory or in your warehouse. I think that is the secret of the whole textile business. That is the challenge, that is the opportunity. And um, I, I think we are never wanting to become a four or an eight color company. And I hope that things never, never become like that and individuals are quite specific about their color. There'll always be certain colors which are selling more. In the home space, very, very bright colors they they are obviously used as as a spice. I would just say, as you use spice in the food, you use very very bright, very stark colors only for that. Otherwise, the colors are normally kept calmer to match with the wall colors, or the wall colors will match the you know lighter colors of or, or slightly calmer colors, neutral colors in the home furnishing. Right. So I think I would like to then move on to the next question on what are the new things or new developments happening in the area of the raw material or any applications on fabrics, any new utilities. Um, uh, what, what do you feel? What's happening there? I mean, of course, we, see, we read a lot about absolutely new researches, um, but a lot of them are really not accessible to general designers who are working in this space. Uh, what do you think is happening in our country at the moment or even globally? So, I'll say this, that um, there is a tremendous amount of research going on in the textile industry to make textiles um, far more, I would say, uh, uh, you know, far more functional and far more consumer beneficial than they are today. Uh, one should not underestimate what evolution of technology and enabled by research is round the corner in the textile industry. Um, uh, the textiles are becoming, people have aspirations today in research to make textiles more intelligent, just to use yes. one word. Uh, uh, so there is a lot of research happening in the textile space. To, to go to the second point that 
is that becoming available uh, to the designer or you know to the Indian consumer or to the global consumer? The answer is yes. It is coming through step by step. Everything is is coming through. You now you 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 have on your hand something that talks to your body, a watch, for example, or a Fitbit. Uh, you will in the future uh, be wearing textiles that will talk to your body. You'll be sitting on textiles that talk to the room. Or, 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 or the curtains. That is, you know, definitely one technological improvement. On the other side, the textile substrates per se, whether when you talk about, you know, are there any new fibers? Are there any, any new benefits of these fibers? Um, there is a, a slight shift from just developing new fibers to developing sustainable textiles. And I think... Uh, there is a very, very big uh, uh, movement starting abroad, at least. And I'm sure the Indian younger consumers also are getting very sensitive to it, which is the sustainability piece. And uh, in that sense, if you tell somebody, I have something synthetic, which can do A, B, C, that is not exciting the consumer as much as I have something natural, which is eco-friendly. That is uh, exciting the consumer much more. So that's a, that's a consumer shift. It's not really a technology shift, but te the technology then has to adapt to that. So we, we've had a, a, a situation where one of our customers is running a campaign on uh, that if you buy one meter of fabric, um, which is sustainable, you will prevent three plastic bottles from landing up in the ocean. Mm. So uh, even, even, even brands are beginning to uh, stand behind or stand ahead and lead the move to sustainable you know, products. And the textile industry is a large, very, very large industry, apparel as well as home. Um, and they are uh, going to you know, uh, be contributors in, in reducing the, the footprint, the carbon footprint that we are imposing or the ecological damage that, that we are doing in our manufacturing processes and in our waste, which we, which we create. And I think the home space is also following through over here. So I think that's a trend that we see. I, I'm very uh, optimistic about the improvement that technology is bringing. And, 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 and I, th I just feel communication is, is an issue. I think the, the challenge is being able to make a consumer understand what is new about the technology behind this product. And, and there are at least four or five functional technologies that are being rolled out. Someone's rolling out antiviral fabrics and someone's rolling out flame retardant fabrics and somebody's rolling out you know, fabrics that can easily never be stained or can easily be cleaned. All of this is coming through from a consumer benefit standpoint. And so it's really exciting to know what I understand of sustainability movement a few years ago or quite a few years ago. It was really started by the consumers, the, you know, the real aware people, but who had very small voices and they, they, they seem so insignificant. We are now really happy that the brands have taken it up, large industries have taken it up and really the push coming from both the sides is going to take forward this movement into larger I think ultimately larger results and it's going to perhaps benefit overall the whole planet. Yeah, so and, and, great to and, know that. and if I can just say, you know, the designers have a large role to play over here because mm -hmm. if, you, if you see uh, the decisions are being made by an interior designer and if an interior designer said, I'm going to do my own small bit by ensuring that I prefer a sustainable product rather than a regular product then that will go and create you know, a, a, a change. Absolutely. And so with that in mind, I have another poll question. Uh, Tarika, there's a poll question on sustainability. If you can show that, please. So I know that our poll questions are just very, very simple and straightforward, but we'd love to know what your views are and let's see which sustainability trends have been used most in 2020. So we are aware uh, across many products, the sustainability uh, as a concept is uh, rising very fast and it's taking over uh, the whole movements. 
of design or aligning itself to design. And that I think is exciting for us. So let's see what you have to say about this. So chairs made of recyclable plastic, sustainable paintings made from used clothes and wellness design concentrating on comfort. Um, perhaps all of them are useful, perhaps all of them are sustainable, but our participants feel that wellness design at the moment is the topmost on their minds. Um, do we look at fabrics with that thought process as well, Ajay? Yes, we do. I mean, I just mentioned antiviral. I mean, we are yeah. in these COVID times and you know, also uh, wellness design is 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 got a lot to do with, you know, fabrics that are allowing you to feel more comfortable, and uh, you know, hence the touch of the fabric is becoming important. Whether the fabric is causing you any rash or allergy is becoming very important, and, yeah. and hence well, wellness is important. Functionality is getting more more critical than it was in the past. Mm -hmm. So with all these things, new developments happening, we can literally see um, fabric, not as just colors, the textures, or just the pattern itself. Uh, well, that, that means the, the, the awareness of the consumer really needs to be looked into and who's going to do that? And would you as, a man, as the brand look into that? Of course, would institutions look at that or would the individual consumers try to uh, educate themselves? What do you think? I think um, it's the responsibility of all stakeholders to ensure that there is, you know, they do their bit, but the start must come from manufacturers and brands to propose innovation. Uh, the regulatory bodies in certain cases must, must impose some norms which ensure that the consumer without asking gets a certain you know standard which is good for his health hygiene for the environment that is also that i would say is upon the regulatory body but uh, you know people at the point of sale or the design fraternity just needs to make their effort to be to learn to mm -hmm. to have the interest to learn the difference between a and b and then give a preference or a small premium to what is, uh, you know, not really visible, but what is beneficial to the uh, uh, consumer's wellness, health, you know, Absolutely. That, that is where I would pin the responsibility. Right. So now that also brings me to the question of IPR, because I think in our conversation earlier, you mentioned you really would have a you have very strong beliefs about IPR. Uh, would you like to share them? Yeah, so, you know, I think going back to the earlier question where if you asked me what has been the uh, change in design in the last five years, it's the whole advent of social media mm -hmm. and, and digital. So design has now become extremely digital and, you know, whether it is Instagram or Pinterest, these there is a lot of design ideas available put out by designers mm -hmm. you know which are their, their own creative ideas to be able to uh, impress upon the audience you know their, their their taste their style and hopefully get benefit from it but but our country does not seem to have a strong intellectual property culture and law the copying of design is the reason why textile industry is not as attractive as, you know, other industries like electronics, etc. If you copied the design of an Apple iPhone, you would be in a courtroom for the rest of your life. But uh, if you copy a flower, which has been made by someone with careful work, it, it seems, it, it, no one seems to be really concerned about it. And I think in India, in any case, the, the courts, etc., are very, very slow to enforce law. So a lot of people will not pursue that. This is creating a very negative impact on the design fraternity as well. And, you know, hence, I, I, I would say that unless that happens, people are going to keep using CAD systems and cameras and, you know, 
lots of laptops and screenshots and all of that to transmit other people's ideas as their own. And, 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 and I feel that is as bad as walking into Jagdish stores and stealing fabric. Absolutely. And so, I'm, I really think a lot of participants today who are designers really would agree with you. So uh, thank you for being a brand and talking about it because many times uh, I think it's the individual designers also uh, perhaps not being able to take on their brands when such things happen. Yeah, I, I think there's, a, there's an improvement in, in, in everybody's work where by getting the chance to look at other people's work. Exposure to design is fine and iteration or adapt modification is fine, but Xeroxing design, lifting design is not fine. Correct. Well, we, are, we, we absolutely agree with you. And I have one, one other very sensitive question. Uh, this is to do with, you know, the handloom industry is a very... Uh, of course, it employs many people, but in terms of volumes, not really very large, especially for the furnishings. Um, do you think it's going to survive? Do you think there is any future for it? Or what can be done about it? So um, I'll say that, you know, it's, it's not an area where I have, uh, you know, spent a lot of my time. Uh, uh, I Like I told you, my whole evolution has been in the world of engineering and machinery which okay. kind which kind of goes against hand looms in in a indirect manner not in a direct manner but um, uh, i being a citizen of this country and being sensitive to two things one is our heritage and uh, second is you know our uh, you know our whole poverty situation if, if you look, we have a lot of skill sets. We have people who spend, you know, a, an entire month and come up with probably a rug, which is handmade or, pro or probably will come up with a, with a dari or something of that sort, which is all coming from the handloom sector or maybe the power loom sector. Some of, some, some of these people have also mechanized a little bit, taking it one step ahead to improve their output and income. But um, I, I think it will remain a niche. And, you know, the, the, it will be premium. Anyone and, and the consumer will, will always value that. There will be consumers who will say this is special because it's handmade and it's special because it's, it's supporting. And I also feel that uh, there is a need for the textile industry in India to protect this. Because if we don't protect this, this is heritage. We lose our heritage. And that's not a good thing at all. We should not lose our, 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 our you know, major heritage differentiators because that makes us who we are. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. I, I'm very sure all of us uh, hold this dear to our hearts, but we also struggle to figure out what best can be done. But this is real. We have many, many questions coming up. Uh, so if you'd like to take a glass of water in the meantime, I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm just going to quickly announce uh, this session has been brought to you by JS Institute of Design and I'd like to just uh, invite all our participants to uh, look at a huge opportunity. So we are offering a 100% scholarship for hospitality in interior spaces. Um, so if, if you are uh, you are excited, you want to be a designer, you are, uh, you are hardworking and you are smart, you are ambitious, you are passionate and, and most of all you are absolutely dying to be a designer. This is a great opportunity for you. It's a free term for the next, uh, from starting from September and we'd like to invite you to apply for this program. Uh, do call us, do check out what the program is, and we'll be most happy to interact with you on that. Uh, meantime, I'm going to uh, just go on to the questions. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Um, so the question, uh, okay, so Shiv has asked, in light of the pandemic, do you see some new type of material to be used 
which is antibacterial or easy to sanitize. Uh, would you throw some light on that, Ajay? Uh, can, can you please repeat? I, okay. I... So due to the and uh, due to pandemic, do you think there are some any new material which could which would probably be antibacterial or easy to sanitize? Do you think that's there's something on the way which will address this? Yes. And can, oh, so shall I just, there's just another extension to that. Can you tell about DGU inbuilt blinds? Oh, which, I think it's a different question. So sorry, I can take that later. So okay. it's about antibacterial sanitization, any new material development. So, so DDECO is launching uh, ViroGuard. This is something which we have developed for you know our fabrics uh, along with the swiss technology that kind of kills the back the virus including covid-19 this is the you know uh, proven test in an australian lab that even covid-19 gets killed within 30 seconds of hitting the, the textile surface if it has been treated by this as as much as some people may interpret this as a fad as something which is you know there to make money out of the current opportunity. It's quite different. I think uh, it's the brand's responsibility to introduce this for customers who are looking for protection. Mm. So that's why we are doing it. Absolutely. Okay, so there. Uh, so one more hope for the pandemic driven world. And uh, there's another question, which is, I think, a bit different. It's about uh, can you tell about DGU inbuilt blinds, which doesn't require much maintenance? Uh, would you know about that? I don't know what DGU blinds are. So, so, so sorry, I'm not familiar. So I'll. Okay, so uh, we'll have to apologize. keep that for later, or we will be able to answer you uh, once we find out ourselves. In the meantime, another question on uh, this is really about design and trends. Is the trend in furnishing and fabrics about the use of blending patterns and contrasting colors? Um, would you be able to answer that? I mean, is this, is this a new trend for 2020, uh, 2021, 2022? Uh, that is that if there is a trend for contrasting colors. There is. Yes. I, oh. I, would, I would say there is a trend for contrasting colors. Okay. And, I, I, and, I, and I do believe it comes from apparel. Oh, lovely. So you guys watch out for apparel or fashion trends. And perhaps uh, uh, as Ajay has already given us the little tip, let's use it in our, in our design works. It's going to help us. Okay. So, and there's a question on um, the, the course at JSID. I can take a very quick time to answer it. What is the minimum qualification? Uh, to be part of JSID, uh, the minimum uh, criteria would be you need to be to be eligible. You need to be a graduate, which means you should have done three years of graduation, or you could have done three years of diploma with one or two years of experience uh, working in the industry. Uh, you of course will have to approach, just write to JSID. We are we are giving out our numbers in the slides later, or go to our website and get the details. The scholarship is available to the, the eligible candidates. You'll have to undergo an, uh, an interview and we'd like to look at your portfolio. But of course, it is, like I said, available to people who, are, who, who really show your credentials to wanting to be a designer, uh, an interior designer. Um, uh, another question for you, Ajay. What is the most difficult type of textile to produce? Um, is there such a yes? I think uh, the most difficult type of textile to produce is is the one where you do not have good quality coming from the raw material side. Somewhere the natural uh, uh, fibers, for example, uh, you know fibers like linen, uh, are you know more difficult to process than a, a synthetic. So that is the only one which is difficult. Mm -hmm. The ones which are, which are having natural imperfections. But then that's the beauty in them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, that, that's their differentiating factor. Right. Okay. Uh, when do you decide a design has is retired? So nowadays we live in a world of data. Data decides that. Okay. So, so 
wait for the consumers to stop buying and you get yeah. the data of that yeah, we'll, yeah we look at the rate of sale and once the rate of sale is doesn't justify the inventory it is discontinued all right um well this would be a question which i'm sure uh, you may have a varied answer on how much importance uh, do fabrics play in interior styling so um my answer is biased i Not believe sure. I, I i believe that uh, if you came to your home and let's say that you know your spouse whether it's your husband or your wife or whoever someone at your house changed the entire home furnishing it is impossible that you wouldn't notice it it has a a, a significant impact on the, the the space visually and the energy in the space changes a lot you can put a red colored upholstery on a sofa and you can put a dark gray and you can see the difference in the room uh if you changed anything else in the space would it have that much impact well the answer is yes only for those items which would involve a major surgery fabric has the the biggest impact for the quantum of uh, stress it creates in the consumer's life very little stress easy to change like changing your clothes if you change your you know clothes of your house it will have a big impact on how your home is looking and how you're feeling in that room absolutely so uh, well as an educator i would absolutely agree with uh, ajay about the role of fabrics in a style in interior styling it is the comfort factor which um, uh, in the in the space and i do think Uh, it has the versatility of colors textures patterns uh, and many more to uh, to bring about a, 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 an addition to the room so definitely very important and hence it's very important for the people learning uh, in this field to make sure your understanding of fabrics is top notch okay um can you regulate the acoustics very interesting can you regulate the acoustics of an interior space with fabrics sure sure you sure you yes. can yes yeah do you suggest any particular kind yeah so uh, there are uh, types of fabrics which can uh, you know which are much more functional and they are absorb sound much more and uh, you know more details about that i would say i have got to do with technical uh, product specs it's most it's it's mostly uh, fabrics which are absorbent of sound as well i'll say correct okay so all right uh, how can we know about the durability of a fabric for upholstery ah okay that's an interesting question so um usually um india does not have any upholstery governed standard there is no consumer standard created by the regulatory body saying that if x y z test is not complied with the fabric cannot be sold as upholstery that doesn't exist in india so uh, as a brand uh, that has learned from the international markets the quality standards what we do is behind each of our fabrics we mention what are the performance standards of that fabric and what are the recommended end uses okay whether it is for only to be used for light upholstery like a cushion or whether it can be used in a hotel lobby as a heavy duty contract upholstery wow. so we we are using different tests and the four most important tests are the martindale the seam slippage the uh, the whole pilling of the fabric and the fourth one is you know all 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 related to rubbing fastness so i think for an upholstery these four fabrics are extremely important right so would you so i do know that for the uh, for fabrics which are exported or products which are exported there are all these testing centers uh, don't our domestic products undergo a similar kind of parameters before they go into the markets so uh, you know when there is a lack of a regulation a standard uh, people take their own route to quality some take the cheap route to quality which can prove to be cheap uh, you save yourself from all the hassles of testing and rejecting and constructing optimally your products 
but sometimes it can be very expensive because the consumer may have a bad experience and will come back and uh, you know express his disappointment some take a prudent approach at the decor uh, i can only say that we don't have a choice we do not follow two cultures two standards in the country in in our factory and uh, since we are a brand uh, you know we dare not disappoint our consumer with bad quality so we put everything through our own rigorous testing mm -hmm. right um so this is a question about uh, sustainability how do you balance how do you find the balance between sustainability durability and ease of maintenance while choosing fabrics it's a very very good question okay. uh, i i i would say that uh, every single scientific intervention of a natural material needs to be conscientious of its environmental impact example if we you know like like is asked in the question if you want it to be free of maintenance so we we are uh, using uh, a finish which allows the fabric to prevents the fabric from getting a stain if you drop a coffee you can easily clean it and the same applies for shirts uh, this is a common uh i would say consumer solution that has been popular but it has been using in the past an environmentally damaging fluorocarbon there is a strong move to develop in uh, a, a solution now which is what they called c0 carbon neutral so the answer the short answer is it's science science needs to ensure that whatever it is doing to enhance durability and ease of maintenance does not come at the expense of sustainability true well i think there there's a lot more uh, understanding required by the consumers as well and i hope we uh, we do find platforms where such understanding comes through uh, i hope subhar your your question has been answered uh, meantime jyoti asks there are she has a question about there are furniture brands that offer to take old furniture and recycle them into your desired new design to reduce the carbon footprint can there be a similar scheme used in the textiles or upholstery industry or uh, anything already existing is there something existing so there is nothing existing i think uh, uh, you know if if you really are a believer in sustainability then that is the only way to say something sustainable because you are not adding to the uh, ecological imbalance you take something old back you are able to recycle it into something old into something new and that is really the only way to say that i am sustainable and i think in fabrics as well you will see as the consumers demand this as this trend intensifies people will say give me your old home furnishings back and take this you know and we will promise you that we are going to use we are not going to throw your old furnishings we are going to use that to make the next batch of furnishing for another consumer well uh, jyoti that's that's your answer and i'm sure there's lot more one can think further uh one more question for you uh, shirish uh, has a question about do you think there is a scope of adoption of viscous based fiber in furnishing especially with non sustainable polyester being used extensively can viscous be can viscous replace that so um i i don't believe viscous can replace uh, non sustainable po sustainable polyester and uh, why would one go towards non sustainable polyester we have sustainable polyester available sustainable polyester is a sustainable b has performance c has pricing all three are better than viscose absolutely i think trying to understand polyester as a sustainable material there's a whole lot of new session required because uh, you know anything man made is not necessarily non sustainable there are and of course viscose is uh, directly from nature from natural plants but it is one of the most unsustainable fabrics around so perhaps yeah. we need a good understanding of what is 
sustainable and what is not. So if um, I, can just, I can just add one sentence, I'll say that polyester, which is called sustainable or recyclable, is made from PET bottles. And these PET, these PET bottles, in a certain way, they are a synthetic material which is going into the environment, which goes, which is all your plastic material that can go and damage your marine environment, etc. Uh, you are taking away that waste from the environment and making polyester. So it is in that sense contributing, you know, to the to reducing the waste in the environment. Right. There's a question from Latika. There is always a difference in quality of suede and velvet fabric, particularly available abroad and in India. Mm -hmm. Is that a quality issue or is that a technology issue? Well, it's a technology issue. Uh, and uh, I'd agree for the suede, but I wouldn't agree for the velvets. Uh, I think velvet technology in India is at par with uh, anything available abroad. Of course, uh, for a better paying customer uh, abroad, there is a lot of improved offer because there is a larger audience with a willingness to pay. And that fetches, a high, a, a, I would say, a manufacturable or serviceable you know, situ solution for better products. India uh, very quickly gravitates towards uh, pricing and towards lookalikes that are not really the same thing. So on the velvets, that is what is my statement. On the suede, it's a technology problem. Uh, uh, making what is called Alcantara uh, requires a certain manufacturing system that I don't believe anybody in India has. All right. Uh, now there's a question on IP uh, by Vinod. Could you please explain about IP rating? Is there an IP rating, something like an IP rating? No. There isn't. Uh, perhaps we would have to get this sorted out some other time, we know. Uh, okay, one more. How would you differentiate fabrics for res residential use and to be used in hospitality space? That's a good question. It is. And uh, I would say that uh, the right way to differentiate is through the, the tests. And uh, in hospitality uh, or hospitals, it depends what exactly, again, is the end use. If you're using, you know, uh, fabric in, a, in an operation theater as a curtain, it's very different from if you're using the fabric as a bed sheet on a, on a hospital bed. So it's all based on the end use. There's got to be a certain performance. In the bed sheet example, you need a very strong number of washes. That's what they would want because they'd like for hygiene reasons to wash much more intensively than you wash at home. Mm -hmm. on, the, on, on the, you know, operation theater, you definitely want something which is very, very, uh, you know, antibacterial, antiviral, very sterile environment facilitating, does not absorb or hold dust. So it, it's all about functional performance. And I, I think, you know, that the lack from the questions, I can only judge. India is having questions. Indian brands are not putting out the answers or somewhere this is getting lost, but the solution to everything is textile testing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so we would urge the industry as well to let's go ahead and work together and figure out a lot of consumer demand is there. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these are designers who have faced some of these problems. So Latika has a question about the durability. That is the number of rubs of the fabrics uh, are really less for the hospitality industry, which is available in India. Uh, because one needs at least 15 to 30,000. Is uh, this available or is it? I, 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 is it I, I, it's not available. Sorry? So the, the fabrics are available uh, for the hospitality industry, which requires at least 15 to 30,000 rubs. Uh, very, very much available. Oh, it's Again, available in India? Very much available. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think we are, we are doing at least 10 fabrics where the uh, rubs are more than 100,000. Well, Latika, there you have the answer. So you may please explore the fabrics from the decor and um, perhaps have a closer look. Um, okay, I do think there are many more questions, but I'm just going to select a few which I think really uh, requires 
Uh, what are the changes we see in the industry after this pandemic? In, in, in the home furnishing industry or the interior industry? Uh, I think both. It will be good to answer both. Well, I think you're going to see a boom in both these businesses because people are stuck at home and uh, they are going to emphasize their home much more. Oh, and, yeah. and it's not that the pandemic will get over and people will forget and ignore. I think uh, we are learning now that your space at home is your sa sane and safe space in many circumstances in a country like India, mm -hmm. where, where really it is difficult to expect a lot of calm, quiet, exclusivity, beauty, sanity outside because we are a country of 1.4 billion people and we are still developing our infrastructure and our capabilities. So the spaces outside your home are not, not as nice. So the only nice place to have in your life to be able to think better, function better, feel better is your home. So I expect the COVID to be a, a, a very sharp wake up call for lots of people who have been saying that, you know, it doesn't matter. I hardly does it ever anyone come to my house. On the other side, on the other side, I would say the, the impact on the uh, home textile industry is going to be, there is going to be a, a demand for more health, hygiene, mm -hmm. antibacterial. And the last and the most important impact I feel is the move to digital. And that is going to be again, a lasting impact. Uh, the fact that COVID has, this whole concern about social distancing and physical engagement means people are learning a new way to buy, to sell, to communicate, to propose, to imagine. And all of that is pointing towards digital. Right. Uh, so there has been a lot of gyan um, by Ajay. And one of the very important ones to the designer is, is there a future for a textile uh, for textile designer in the manufacturing space is the future? Well, there's a tremendous future for uh, somebody who is a textile designer joining the manufacturing space. Uh, the only key factor is that one needs to be somebody who is able to differentiate himself or mm -hmm. herself. And, and then that will stand out. I, I would go as much as to say that the trends of naming collections after designers started by Sabyasachi, for example, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, a brand power that uh, that designer has, uh, you know, uh, demonstrated by signing up with lots of premier manufacturing companies and brands. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, uh, you know, we can see more of that in the future from textile designers. Well, I think designers, uh, there is a bright future ahead for all of us. And and lastly, Francis says, how can I submit my prototype to your company? <laughs> Is that something you'd welcome? It's a prototype. It's a, it's a sample. Yeah, I, at least in the question it says so, Francis. So probably it will be good for you to explain this further if possible. So if it's a sample, do you think you'd like to look at it? Very much. Uh, I, I, I think, uh, you know, if, you, if they went to our website and sent us a uh, a, a request, we, I'm sure somebody would respond. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Ajay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my throat is going. Um, thank you for your time, for your detailed answers. And uh, there are many more questions, but I do want to, to sort of give you a relief now. I'm sure we are sort of given you lots and lots and things, a lot of things which have been, which have been dressed up. And Thank you for answering them so patiently. Uh, I'd like to thank my participants. We always get so many questions and perhaps this really know, that shows that our participants listen very carefully to our guests and they, they believe a lot in what our guests speak about. So th that is our reaffirmation of um, our participants believing in you and wanting and we, and really thanking you for being here with us. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for listening. I, I, great session for me to learn that the consumer has so many things running in their mind. And so many more questions, hopefully we'll be able to answer or we'll, we'll send the answers forward to you when we get them done for the rest of those who, whom we couldn't answer. And I want to just remind you once again, JS Institute of Design 
is inviting you to uh, apply for the free term because we do have a very exciting term ahead for you starting from September. So look forward to hearing from you. And again, on a Thursday, we will come back to you with Discover Design. Thank you, Ajay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.